The couple's trip continues, and so does all the usual drama. Plus, we're talking about not one, but two episodes tonight. This is the Married to Med Medicine After Show. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, the buzz. Hey, everybody. Hello. How's everyone doing? Welcome back. Welcome back. If you're watching or listening, then you know this is the Married to Medicine After Show. We so missed you last week. But to make up for it, we are talking about two episodes tonight. We're talking episodes 12 and 13 of season 7, Revenge of the Sup and Paint and Swap Till You Drop. Pair of dogs? What? <laughs> did, did that voice come out of nowhere? Did everybody hear that? Okay. I'm like, what? Let's get back to it. That was like a ghost or something. The ghost of Mary to Medicine just popped up. Okay, let's get back on into it. So since we're talking about two episodes, we're going to try to get through each cu person, like each couple, I guess, mm -hmm. instead of going on with every single detail. We're just going to go couple by couple. Um, but before we do that, let's get your overall thoughts of the show. I liked it. I feel like it's getting more and more interesting every episode. Okay. Um, I do feel like I'm starting to see more from Contessa because that storyline was just getting boring to me after mm -hmm. a while. But I'm, I, I liked their interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. I really like to see healthy relationships. I really like to see them developing before our eyes. I love watching shows that we can actually learn from, mm -hmm. especially our culture. Um, so I really love both episodes. That's good that you liked both episodes. You didn't like them? Because, honestly, it's not that I didn't like them. Like, I enjoyed them. I always mm -hmm. enjoy these episodes. I love this cast. They're always fun to watch. Mm -hmm. But from just a having something to talk about perspective, I don't think there was yeah. anything too no noteworthy. So I'm actually a little happy that we're doing two episodes in one. Because, honestly, if it was just one episode, I we probably Good would be stretch. done. Yeah. yeah. We would have just been rambling and rambling. But since we have so much to talk about, we're going to get right on into it. I love that you brought up Contessa because I want to talk about her first. Because I feel like we saw a lot of their situation in these two episodes. Mm -hmm. um, episode 12 started off kind of leading off with their mess of how basically she didn't feel supported and how everybody at the table was saying, well, you know, you're supposed to support your spouse and everything that they do, but she doesn't feel that he's done that for her, but he feels like she has and she storms off from the table and he doesn't go after her. Buffy goes after her. What did you think about that? Do you Did you think that, you know, maybe he knows his marriage, he knows, okay, let me take the time, let her cool down before I go talk to her? Or do you think that he should have ran after her to see if she was okay? Well, I think in any situation like that, in relationships or even friendships, it's like when you're in the heat of the moment, you want to give the person um, their space. So it's one of those things where if, if I'm talking to my spouse and we're in an argument and he takes off, it just depends on the situation if I'm going to run behind him. Mm -hmm. Because in this case, I don't think it was worthy of him to run behind her because... I just really do feel like, you know, retaliation in a heated moment is like it, it can it can get there. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's best to just, OK, like, let me let them walk away, cool off, give them, them their space mm -hmm. and then revisit it once everything is cooled off. Because you make I think when you make decisions in a relationship and you're in the heat of the moment, that's not really the decision that you really want to make. You're just making it off of emotions. Mm -hmm. And anytime you're making a decision off of emotions, I don't know if it's an 100 percent right decision to make. Mm -hmm. So I totally get that because when I was watching it, I didn't think anything of him not going after her until some of the ladies were like, oh, I can't believe that he's not yeah. going after her. And he was like, Trying I guess to make something. Right. And know. I guess that's how they saw things in their marriage. They don't, you know, check on each other. They just let each other go. And even then I was kind of like, well, that's just the, their, the way their marriage is. But as we saw them sit down with their counselor and as we heard her, you know, it kind of explain how she felt to Buffy. That's when I was like, OK, well, maybe that is an issue in their marriage, the fact that they don't really talk about their issues. Because even on the show, after that whole situation happened, he was like, we never talked about it. It never gets resolved. We just kind of just go about on our day like it never happened. How? And, like, yeah. how could you, how how do you expect to have a healthy marriage mm -hmm. and you guys aren't communicating? Right. Communication is key, mm -hmm. period. If I can communicate with you, why are we even together? Right, and I think they're starting to see that now in mm -hmm. the issues with their marriage because, um, and I 
you know how I've been feeling about Contessa all season. I like know. I felt like she was just surfing for a storyline and I kind of felt like she was wrong in the situation. But kind of hearing her talk about it, hearing how, you know, this was the one thing she wanted to do. You know, he encouraged her to get out of the military. She didn't want to move to Atlanta, but she went for him. And now she wanted to do this one thing and they couldn't even go a whole year without, you know, the kids feeling like things were going bad without the house kind of still pushing on the way it was. So it's like, you couldn't have supported me for a year Mm -hmm. as I tried to do something, as I've always supported you. So when I saw it from that perspective, I kind of understood Contessa. But it also, to me, was like, okay, well, did y'all not have a discussion before you went off to school about that, where all you all could have got all of those concerns out on the table? Because it sounds like the real issue here is that they never talked about it. Yeah. That, you know, she, it sounds like she just decided to go to school and they, she didn't really talk to him about it. And in her not talking to him, he didn't get to voice that he didn't like that she was doing that. Um, so what do you think about that? I just think, I, I don't know if it's Contessa's personality, but I'm trying to uh, to adapt to her personality because she's kind of like, I don't even see them being intimate. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know how they're in a happy, well, they're not in a happy marriage, but I don't even see them, like, really being in love and everything because their interaction is so awkward to me. Yeah. It's like they're friends. Like, mm-hmm. okay, like, we're existing, we're friends, we're going through the motion, whatever. But it's like, as far as really being intimate, I don't even think I've ever seen them kiss. I, I Definitely not this season. I think they're in a place now where... You know, you love your partner, but you don't like your partner. Like, you don't want to be intimate with them. You don't want to be like that with them because I really don't kind of want to see your face right now because Mm -hmm. I think Contessa feels resentment for for Scott for making her feel like she had to come back. And Scott feels resentment towards Contessa for feeling that he made her come back because in his mind, he doesn't feel like she did. So it just sounds like it's all a big mess that hopefully can be resolved in therapy. And I I want them to work because I do like them together, but Mm -hmm. I do think that he should let her go to school. And I will say it was something that I didn't really pick up on at first, but I did notice a clip where he kind of was feeding the kids a little bit as Mm -hmm. far as like how they should feel about it. And I don't think that's healthy at all because Mm -hmm. if anything whether he agrees with it or not in front of the kids he should keep it cool you know so Mm -hmm. they're not stressing out at school or acting out Mm -hmm. or you know feeling some type of way about their mom it's like I don't care if me and my husband is like at odds with one another our kids should never see that Mm -hmm. and our kids should never know that I feel some type of way about it everything should always be good in front of them healthy in front of them because kids take stuff and run with it mm-hmm. like and make their own thing up in their head so i did see that clip where he was kind of like you know telling them you know basically like she said forming a narrative so i will say on on her side i, I did agree with that but everything okay. else i do feel like it's a stretch i'm kind of going back and forth with whether or not i believe that that's really what he's doing one mm-hmm. i don't think as a father, he would ever want to put his kids in a position to resent their mom. Um, and I also don't, I don't want Contessa to just come up with that conclusion and basically discredit her kids' feelings because yeah, I don't true. think it's unrealistic for kids to feel sad or feel like something's missing when their mom all of a sudden isn't there every day, all day. Um, so is it like, are you putting all this blame on him to really take away from the fact that your kids may feel like you may have not made the best decision by going away? Mm -hmm. Or is it strictly because they hear daddy complaining about it, even though I'm sure he's not trying to throw mom under the bus, maybe just not even thinking, making a smart comment and the kid picks up on it. Yeah, we have um, Miss Dolores in the live chat. Hi, Hi. Miss Dolores. She said, um, yeah, she totally agreed that they shouldn't make a decision out of emotions. And she did say that she picked up on... um, him making the comment to the kids. Yeah. So we'll we'll just see how it unfolds. As of now, I mm-hmm. can't really form a full opinion on it because I'm still trying to figure them out. Like, yeah. but I will say they have to come with something else that they're going to be on next season because this storyline, I'm just it's it's uh, it's rambling. Yeah. At this point, do you think it's something they can work through? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. It's not it's not anything like I don't feel like that. But they both have to want it. Mm-hmm. And they both have to, to me, show more effort. Because mm-hmm. to me, it's just like, okay, we get to it when we get to it. Even when the um, when a therapist was at the house, it's just like, again, it's just, I don't know how, if that's how it is with therapy sessions either. And I've never been married, so it's only so much I can say. Mm-hmm. Because we never know, like I always say, you never know what you're going to do until you're in the situation. But it is one of those things where I don't feel like... Either, I feel like they're just going through the motion. I don't mm-hmm. feel like I'm seeing like 
we got to work hard for this. We got to fight for our marriage. Right. And I just feel like they're just like, okay, mm-hmm. this is how I feel. All right, cool. And you go back and doing the same thing. The whole point of therapy is to get out what's going on, take what you learned from therapy and apply it to your marriage. I don't see anything different being applied. Mm-hmm. So... Well, maybe they'll, you know, get those differences in counseling. I hope not. I really do like Scott and Contessa, and I feel Mm -hmm. like they had always been one of the healthier couples um, leading up to all of this. It seems like this, at least on this show, has been the only real issue we've seen them have in their marriage. So I hope they can work it out and she can still go to school. And But I do kind of agree there's a double, double standard with women kind of being the ones to compromise on what they want for the sake of the man following their dreams and doing mm-hmm. what they want. So hopefully in their resolve, they can still figure out a way to, it won't have to be like that. Yeah. Um, so before we go on, do you have a message for our viewers? I do. I just want to thank you all for tuning in to our show tonight. I'm not sure if you're listening to us on YouTube, iTunes, or if you're tuning in live, but wherever you're listening to us, we just want to thank you for supporting us. Make sure to give us a five-star rating. Give us a thumbs up. Get involved in the conversation. I'm always in the live trying to see what you guys are talking about, and we will give you shout-outs. So definitely thank you for supporting us and making us the ESPN of TV Talk and continue to support us. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you for everybody who's watching right now if you're in the live chat comment we are looking we want to see what you think as well um i went to go look at my notes and it made me think of something i wanted to ask when we were talking about scott and contessa so very quickly um in her discussion she mentioned how scott never brought the kids to see her in nashville what do you think of that do you think that he should have brought her do you think that just stemmed from Mm. the fact that he didn't want her to be there what do you think hmm that's interesting I think it's a mixture of both because he he already felt some type of way about her being away. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, that's a tough one. Yeah, because it's you like, can do Skype and FaceTime and stuff, but there's nothing like having that interaction right. with your children. Exactly. So you want them to be there. Mm-hmm. That's a tough one because then it's it's really one of those things where you have to be in support of that Mm -hmm. just think about as a man too okay kids come on let's get you ready we're going on a road trip doing all that you have to be in support of your wife during that time to be to be into that if Mm -hmm. not you're just going to be going through the motion already feeling like it's a stretch that you're by yourself Mm -hmm. have to feed the kids have to bring them to school probably go to pta meetings all this stuff by yourself so you feel like you're a single parent so you're not gonna be trying to bring them if you feel like that if yeah. you're in support it's like oh let's go see mom like, so basically you, know? you don't think he's supporting her by not bringing the kids i, I think agree that's with what you. i'm saying i do and i think it kind of goes against well you claim that the issue is that the kids feel away but you had the opportunity to bring the kids that could have been an extra that's day they got with their mom and you didn't bring them there just that's a good to, point. Yeah, just had to bring that up because it, it's, it was a big thing that stuck out to me, but I completely forgot about it when we were talking about it. So, Anywho, let's talk about Heavenly and Daddy. So, Not Daddy. Yes, Dr. Daddy. Dr. Daddy, honey. <laughs> so at the beginning of the season, the women went to the naked man sipping paint, and the mm-hmm. guys had been saying that they were going to do their own thing, but I didn't believe they were going to do it. But they did. They went to a strip club while they were in Mexico, and all of the wives seem to not have an issue with it the only people who were upset about their husbands being at the strip club was dr heavenly she felt very upset that daddy was there she found out that somebody was sitting in his lap she did not like it do you think she was overreacting no no really i'm just kidding i do <laughs> no, i do no true. i do i do think she's overreacting because i don't know if you guys remember but at that sip and paint they did show that the man picked her up now mm-hmm. i know she was uncomfortable and she didn't want that mm-hmm. but she was all into that making little comments and stuff mm-hmm. but i will say from a woman's standpoint and if that was my husband and seeing how much she was in his face i would have felt some type of way too mm-hmm. and I, I can't lie because even though it's one of those things where it's like okay he didn't have sex it wasn't that big of a deal like they're just having fun it's just one of those things where it's just like i know how i'm in how i am in a relationship so if Mm -hmm. i'm married i will feel like her i don't want no woman in my man's face like Mm -hmm. none of that but at the same time the reality of it is he didn't do anything he was having fun with his boys but just to see that just imagine you in love with somebody and to see that yeah. I will feel some type of way. Yeah, and to your point, you know, they didn't have sex, but I didn't even realize it until I rewatched episode 12 today to get prepared for the show, is the stripper literally asked him, do you want sex? So it's like, even though oh, he yeah. didn't have sex, 
they really kind of put him in a position where if he was that type of guy, he could have acted out on it. But at the same time, you know, you're, there's always going to be that risk when you're married. If your husband really wanted to cheat, I don't think it would have taken him going to the strip club. I think oh, he yeah. could have found any way um, oh, come to on. go and treat. We but... know. He, I don't think he. I don't think he. He would cheat on her. Oh no! I and don't I think... don't. I think deep down she doesn't think that either, which yeah. is why I don't understand why she got upset. Because in my opinion, if you're upset about him being in that situation, is it because of a trust issue you have with him? He, you may. He may be your husband. He may have not ever done it. But is there something deep down making you think that he could? I just think with Heavenly, even though the love is there, Heavenly is somewhat insecure. And Heavenly doesn't have the most confidence. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, jealousy. It's like a jealousy thing. And it's like when you're not 100% confident in yourself and you think about, she don't know what they look like. Mm -hmm. But just imagine what's going through her head like, Mm, mm-hmm. Was she prettier than me? Did he say this? Did he mm-hmm. do that? And I just know just over the course of the season how she's been like what insecurities and certain things, even though we know that the love is there and they're happily married. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's one of those things where I think she was being jealous and a little bit possessive. Yeah. Do you think that um, Cecil was in the wrong for taking the guy? No. No? I don't. I, I don't because they, they need to it. have fun. Yeah. We don't see the guys have enough fun. Period. Mm-hmm. I feel like I love the fact when I seen him sitting at the table at the head of the table and kind of orchestrating the guys, I was excited because I'm like, okay, this is going to bring another twist to the show. We can see the girls getting together, enjoy themselves. We can see the guys having fun and we're able to get to know them a little better. We don't really, we know the personality of the guys but it's always you know in the confessionals time when we kind of see them spark up little things but mainly it's the women Mm -hmm. that we see most of the drama with we see the guys input a little bit here and there so it'll be it's refreshing to see them have a little fun Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because that's the reality of it Mm -hmm. what i loved about it is that uh Cecil lied and said that Dr. Daddy didn't want to come. He said they pulled up to the place and he was like, I don't want to go in there. And they wouldn't let him go home, which we all knew was a lie Girl, because they did a recap to say when they on. showed him, he was like, I just got so much more energy. Like he wanted to be there, but it was just funny to me because I think it's it's great, but also not great because as a woman, I'm like, I know that guys' friends be lying for them. Exactly. But it's funny how the guys had each other's back and Cecil took up for Damon versus when the women went to the sip and paint. Heavenly, you know, telling him about him picking her up and sending out the picture of, you know, them there. It's like, okay, I know Heavenly and um, Mariah aren't really the best of friends, but she didn't have to send out that picture. She didn't. She didn't have to let everybody know what happened. So it's it's funny how the guys would cover up for each other and the women won't. And that just goes to show the natural instincts of a woman and the natural instincts of a guy as well because Mm -hmm. even with the ladies like you said they went home they told their husband what happened pretty much the ladies was like okay so what did y'all do last night Mm -hmm. like I wonder if they would have ever even brought it up like they probably would have never talked about it yeah so it's one of those things where it's like hmm I'm not gonna say men always have something to hide but it's one of those things where if you don't ask they won't tell right I mean, great for loyalty, but ugh, I, I can't know. trust none of your friends. Like, all of them are going to just lie. Okay. Anywho, let's move on to Jackie and Curtis. So before we get to Jackie and Curtis, let's just talk about Jackie, period. Because when we left off, uh, we were all feeling a way that Jackie had put Buffy on Front Street about her inf- and made that infertile comment. And instead of apologizing for it, kind of went off on Buffy for accusing her of saying it, even though everybody knew that it was wrong to do it. Um, But in episode 12, we saw Jackie apologize to her. um, And it seemed like everything had been squashed. What did you think? Did you, were you happy? Were you like, that's fake? Why didn't you do that the first time? With 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 Jackie. Because, because they had brought it up and every, I thought, I don't know what everybody else thought. I for sure thought that Jackie's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That wasn't my intentions. But she kind of went off on Buffy. But in this, um, when they came back, after, I guess after she had that talk with her husband about, you know, he, she shouldn't have done that, she came back and apologized. So what did you think? I just think it's a mixture of so much in that situation. Number one, I don't know why all of a sudden she wants to show this other part of her. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why it's like a thing for her to like, show that um I'm this new Jackie or new Jackie is in town or mm-hmm. whatever she said. Yeah. I don't I don't know what that's about. 
I don't I don't know what that's about. I don't know if she's trying to like show Buffy like she's not to be played with or something. I don't know, but I will say I do think she handled that wrong. Mm-hmm. Um because at the end of the day, this is this woman's personal information and if she wanted everybody to know, mm-hmm. that's something she should be, you know, ready to talk about. Right. It's one of those things where it's like if I share something with you in private, and all of a sudden, and not just to a homegirl, to the whole party. Mm-hmm. It's just like one. And then, too, it wasn't just like a relationship thing. This is something that she's dealing with something personally, she's about. serious, emotionally, everything. I just feel like she should have been more compassionate. I feel like she should have had more empathy. Mm-hmm. I feel like she um, should not have went off on her. And she should have been open. I will say I don't think that was the place to discuss that either because mm-hmm. we're on vacation. You know, we can talk about this when we get back. Yeah, no negative she, vibes. Or just pulled her to the side and had it one to one. Like, hey, since we're here, I just want to clear the air or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I do feel like, and then after so many seasons with these ladies, you would think they know this stuff. Because mm-hmm. this is not like rocket science. It's yeah. just like how do you not understand this? Well, Buffy's still pretty new. She's still kind of learning the group. But I also feel like Jackie, as a doctor, should have known better just for that part of it. But when I she did apologize, I was like, well, there's a Jackie I know and love. Like, I'm glad she is being mature and realized she was wrong. But then followed up the next episode with, like you said, this I'm this new Jackie and people are going to know not to do this and that. And it's like, okay, are, are you over it it's or not? Forced. Did you apologize? Did you apologize because you felt like you had to? Or was it genuine? Because I was a genuine and now you're making all these type of comments. And honestly, if this is supposed to be the new Jackie, I don't like this new Jackie. I don't right. like a Jackie that can't take accountability. I don't like a Jackie who isn't empathetic. And I don't like a Jackie who's going to put everybody's business out. And then being a doctor, that's some of the characteristics that just come with who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and technically, I know that's her friend, but that still was a patient. And that mm-hmm. still was private information so i don't know the laws and how that worked but is she even allowed to do that uh (laughs) i mean i don't know if buffy is her client so i feel like that would be some sort of you know client doctor privilege or whatever but i does it not matter if she's not your client i don't know either way it was wrong yeah it was wrong um and it's funny how she mentioned oh i'm this new jackie but then towards the end of the episode um curtis pulls her to the side and it's like you starting to show some old habits again you starting to be a little bit too busy we finish one thing you start up a whole another thing and i don't want to go down that road no more what did you think of that like because you know women we it goes back to the whole Contessa thing. We shouldn't have to put what we want to do on hold for the sake of our family. But at the same time, we should be able to pursue new things. So what did you think of that whole interaction with Jackie and Curtis? I do think it's one of those things th- where their relationship has already been really rocky. Mm-hmm. So it's just like she should be more on it because... At the end of the day, yes, a relationship works both ways, right? Mm -hmm. But if your man is telling you he's not happy and why he has not been happy, you would think you would be more on and more aware of making sure that your husband is happy so he doesn't have a reason to step out on you. Mm -hmm. I will respect the fact that he came to her and said, you know what? I'm starting to see some old habits. You know, I love that because I don't know how much of that they talked about in therapy session or whatever but it's one of those things where he could have just cheated and Mm -hmm. been like hey well I told you before and you still did it so I cheated you know Mm -hmm. versus okay that's something where I see he wants their marriage to work Mm -hmm. and he's willing to communicate effectively to let her know Um, I do feel like it's Jackie's fault because and that's scary because it kind of makes me feel like Are you not taking your marriage as serious as you should? Mm -hmm. Because this is something that you should be on. This man has already told you before. And now you're over here with the house. You're over here doing this. You're over here. Oh, and then on his time, like, you're just like, oh, I'm 10 minutes. Like, you didn't even think to call him. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just like one of those things where I don't think that she's putting the marriage first and making it a priority. I mean, I do agree because it's like you knew this what is what caused a riff in your first marriage. I never am going to excuse cheating. No yeah, matter yeah, how busy sure. you were, it, it should never be a fear of, oh, I'm too busy, so he's going to go out and cheat because he mm-hmm. shouldn't be cheating at all. Right. He did the right thing by coming to her and saying... I'm feeling a way that, you know, you're not making time for me. But it should there should never be no thought in his mind of, oh, she's not making time because it's time to pick up a new one. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Absolutely. But, but I'm glad that 
not only did he come to her and say something, she was receptive. She was like, I didn't realize. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it to my attention. Let me scale on that. I love it. And mm-hmm. see, that's the type of stuff, especially for our culture, that's the type of stuff that we need more of, especially on reality TV. Mm-hmm. That effective communication, that, okay, nobody's barking at each other, trying to curse each other out, and, mm-hmm. okay, well, we're done walking out. It's like, no, this is normal in a marriage, and they've been married for X amount of years. Mm-hmm. Okay, like I may be too busy, whatever. Talk to me. Let me know, you know, what's going wrong, yeah. how we can fix it. I'm receptive. Okay, mm-hmm. tomorrow let's try this, you know, and yeah. do this. So I I love that. Yeah, which I feel like I hope Contessa and Scott were watching that. I don't know. Because I think that's what they were missing is that communication, like straight up, like, I don't want you to go. Well, I don't feel supported. These are the reasons why. Boom. How can we compromise on this? So, but maybe it took Jackie and Curtis going through what they went through with him cheating as as sad as that is and how awful that is. And no man should ever cheat. But, you know, she had her opportunity to learn that lesson. So hopefully Contessa can learn in a much easier way than, you know, getting cheated on publicly. So. Right. All right. So Quad, she's not a couple, but we're going to talk about her. Aww. Um Honestly, has it, has it been a lot going on with Quad? They threw the um the living single party for her, which I thought was nice. Compared to the guys' night out, it looked very boring. But I think it's nice. <laughs> it did look <laughs> it very, looked very dry. Boring. Like the guys are out turning up with strippers, and y'all are playing fuck Mary Child. kill. Like, <laughs> all right, that's cute. Um, but I'm glad they did something for Quad. They gave her a crown. That even was cute. even Mariah sat there and stayed. She could either easily walked away so that's beautiful so i'm glad that they were able to put her in a situation where they could celebrate her because when they she came back she was dealing with divorce stuff um she's not divorced yet but she signed some papers that may be putting her in that direction are we ready for single quad i'm ready you ready i'm ready i i first of all it is heartbreaking to watch how happy she was in her marriage and how she used to say those things 2015 2016 to 2017 abuse and all this it, that was just so sad for mm-hmm. me and i don't like anybody to go through like relationship issues like that because it's like a real it's like a death like mm-hmm. literally and you have to recondition yourself all over again when you give your heart to someone and you open up to someone now you have to even know if you're ready to trust again you mm-hmm. know so I don't want to see anybody go through that I know how tough that is so I'm happy to see her get out there and hopefully God blesses her with a better man mm-hmm. you know and maybe she needed that relationship to teach her how to be a better her for her future husband so I'm yeah. here for it yeah I just it just sucks that it has to have been strung along for this long like he still hasn't dealt with his tax stuff it's not been necessarily pa- necessary and what, paperwork girl and it's too much why I need to call you to do your taxes right you're grown exactly see listen yeah I th- I mean do you think he's doing it because he doesn't want to get divorced I think he's doing it I don't here's the thing this is what I learned too I learned this from my ex-boyfriend by the way <laughs> it may be a situation where that person knows he's not good for you right mm-hmm. but he will do little things just because he doesn't want to see you with anybody else mm-hmm. so he may not even want to be with quiet right Mm -hmm. but he's gonna like okay i'm just not gonna do my taxes because i know if i don't do my tax taxes then we can't really finalize this divorce it's a kind of like indirect control Mm -hmm. without like really controlling you Mm -hmm. but it's like an indirect control where it's like okay i'm gonna do this because i know this is still gonna affect you in some type of way yeah so um i am happy that she's still going forward with everything to just be done with that because any connection is not good for the healing process Mm -hmm. you have to be a hundred percent done in order to heal and move forward Mm -hmm. the little having a reason to call him to make sure that he's doing his taxes is another reason for the conversation to be like oh how's your taxes also how you been doing oh i've been doing fine oh what you been up to da 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 da. oh what you doing next week Mm -hmm. now is a whole nother thing where it's just like if you don't have any communication none of that will happen so i'm looking forward to her finalizing this and being done so she can move forward yes i am but I mean, she's about to be divorced, which means she's no longer married to medicine. And in oh addition, I know. And in addition to that, honestly, she's been having a very dry season. So we yeah. bring this up all the time as we get further and further into the season. Do we see a quad return next season? Honestly, I really, I want to see quad on TV. Mm-hmm. 
I don't. It doesn't have to be on Married to Medicine, mm-hmm. but she definitely has a personality that is um, for TV. And I think maybe the reason why her personality is like that this season, this season is because she's still healing. And mm-hmm. to be honest, being around this group is going to constantly remind her of her ex husband because. Mm-hmm these were his friends as well and you know we kind of was introduced to you know her because of him in Married to Medicine so I do think it'll be healthy for her not to be on this show Mm. and um, just be done with it because you're constantly going to be reminded of it even you're always on couple trips you're going to be reminded of like come on so I feel like until she gets another husband that's in medicine Mm -hmm. then maybe she should just dead this and focus on sister circle i mean it's not like she really like needs to be focusing on this she can like do great things on sister circle circle and probably come out with her own show where we're able to see her dating guys yeah and and, you know she has that cookbook now she could be cooking you know doing little fun cute stuff so because I'm not going to lie, in the beginning, I was like, can't be married to medicine without Quad. We love Quad. And I blah, know, blah, blah, me blah. too. And it's like, but you're not giving me enough, sis. Yeah. To not be married to medicine, and you're not, you know, I mean, she de- brings up the old drama with people just to stay relevant, it mm-hmm. feels like, but I don't want to see that. I want to see people <laughs> argue over the same. Arguments. I don't want to see that. Yeah, I don't. All right, well, that wraps up both episodes. I think that's pretty much all of the noteworthy stuff that we had for these two episodes. They had some other stuff, like they did some some couples, you know, mazes and games, and they had a Day of the Dead dinner, but, you know, that was all pretty dry to me, to be honest. Is there anything you want to talk about with that, with that stuff? I mean, not really. I will say this. The whole thing that um, Dr. Simone did with the whole makeup and dead and that that caught me for a loop. And I was mm-hmm. like, what what is this about? Yeah. But at the end when she was just like, you know, this is basically symbolic to, you know, us leaving something here, deading something in our relationship mm-hmm. and moving forward. What do you want to leave here? I thought that was like so cute and cool because she tied it in to something Mm -hmm. fun, you know, and that is, I mean, it's a couple's trip. So just try to think of little, her thinking of little creative ways to get everybody involved and also like tied into something that's, you know, meaningful. That was great. I will say the Buffy and Jackie, I don't know if everybody caught this, but you know, when it was time for Buffy was, you know, being sincere, like, you know what? You know, basically, in so many words, I want to just leave it here, you know. But Jackie's responses was along the lines of, I don't want no fake friends. Forget anybody that's fake. Basically, like, if you ain't a real friend, you ain't a real friend, done. Yeah. And I really feel like she's doing that because she knows Buffy's personality is so, like, chill, which Mm -hmm. I'm not happy about, Mm -hmm. you know, um, because we aren't able to get to know her. Like, I feel like she is so much, it's more layers to her that we can't see. I feel like we were able to see more of her when she was at Toya's party Mm -hmm. when we first was introduced to her. But, you know, I don't, I don't really know who she is and I don't know if that's going to be good for the show either because we need to know you and her husband is even worse because we don't, (laughs) we like, come on, personality on a reality show. So that's, that's one thing. But I will say, I think Dr. Simone was right on with that. That was so cute. Yeah. And I also like that I forgot to mention um, how they always on the couple's trip go out and do like mission work. And yeah. Like, they're able oh, to talk yeah. to women about teen pregnancy. And, that's yeah. dope. Mm-hmm. That's dope. I, I don't know. I'm a crier. But when I seen like some of those moments in the episode, I literally like it brought tears to my eyes because I'm like, yo, this is so dope. They're all doctors. They're giving, giving back. And it's one of those things where it's like, it's a really powerful thing when your career is something where you can service others and, you know, do it for free. Like yeah. Contessa said, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, that's really dope. Using your platform for change is yes. always great. Yes. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Let's get quickly get into our tweets. Um, we y'all always tweeting it up out there. Um, it wasn't wasn't too much, but we got a few things that I thought were funnier that led to more conversation. So the first one is from at I am Shaniqua. It says Jackie wants authentic friendships unless you correct her or dare to disagree with her. I be damned. Right. I I if this was last season, I'd be like, no, Jackie's an authentic person. But this new Jackie, I I don't know. I I I kind of agree with that. Doing the most. Yeah. Um, the next one is from at the Dennis Velez. It says, 
now that this divorce is final, can this be Quad's last season on the show? Dang. That's what we were just talking about. I didn't know people felt like this about Quad. Yeah, so if you're in the live chat or if you're watching later, and let us know in the comments what you think about if you want Quad here or if you can see her going. I I think as of now, I can see. Just watch her on Sister Circle, like he said. Aww. I'm interested to see what y'all say. Um, the next one is from at 101 Pages. It says they should make Buffy a permanent cast member. Her life seems interesting and fun. What? Yeah, I don't okay, agree with hold this. Up. <laughs> Bring it back in, baby, because here's the thing. I don't know Buffy. Mm-hmm. What, wh- who is she? Yeah. Like, what what personality are we given? I'm not seeing anything. I Every time I see her, I'm like, how did she end up being the person that they added to this show? She seems like a really nice person. Super nice. Very mature. Her family also has money. Um, It's good to see people oh. with real money on this show. But like you said, we haven't seen enough from her personality. I didn't agree with the stuff that Jackie said about her and putting her stuff on Front Street. But really, that's the only thing we've, reason we've had to talk about her since she's got on this show, other than the Jocelyn Hernandez stuff. I just really... Really was expecting her to go off on Jackie. Like yeah. that was her moment. Mm-hmm. Hold on, like she ended up going off on Heavenly instead of Jackie. Like Buffy, <laughs> if, you, if you want to call me, girl, I can let you know when your moments are mm-hmm. at the table. That was your moment. But you know what? I think she has moments. We see kind of little sparks. And how are you friends with Jocelyn Hernandez and you don't have that type of... You don't have to be as outrageous as her, but just that type of, like, feistiness to you. But maybe we just haven't seen it yet and it's coming, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't really agree with her seeming like she's interesting and fun, but okay. Um, And then the last one is from at Traylon225. It says, is it a new Jackie? Or the real Jackie. Ooh. Which I think is maybe the case because we've had people like Mariah and others on the show say she's not all nice and like she makes herself seem on the show. That'll be good. She's just everybody's friend, so nobody really calls her out on it. So maybe this is the real Jackie we're seeing. And yeah. I don't know. Well, that wraps up the tweets. Let's do our news and gossip. So I'll make it really fast. So. I don't know if you guys have been following um, social media, but if you know, the they're in reali- in reunion season right now. So although we're still watching the episodes, they're actually filming or have already filmed uh, the reunion. So I ran across this little clip. And um, if you guys are on Instagram, it's basically a clip of all the different ladies. And it's different clips of them saying things about Buffy. And they're just like, you know, pretty much saying what we've been saying on the show today. As far as like, we don't know if we're going to see her next season. And if we do see her next season, we want to see more personality from her. So it kind of led me to think what has happened on the reunion Mm -hmm. or what has happened on episodes we haven't seen yet to make everyone say that. So Mm -hmm. just keep on, just keep following them and being on the lookout because I do feel like something is going on with Buffy. We just don't know what it is. Yeah. But if you do look at this clip on Instagram, all of them are saying little things about, we don't know about Buffy. You know, and usually when they give us little spoilers spoilers like that, it's because it's like they are not bringing her on the next season or something has happened to where, you know, we don't know about it yet. Yeah. So I don't know, but that's something that I saw and I want you guys to be on the lookout and let me know what you think. <laughs> I'd be very, very surprised if they brought her back, honestly. Yeah? She just doesn't bring anything to the show for me. And I wonder where, where they cast, because I never hear anything about Married to Medicine cast. Yeah, I, I think it's maybe a word of mouth type thing. Oh, yeah, or if you're friends with someone, like, I think her and Simone are good friends, but oh. she need more interesting friends, I guess, or bring some old people back, some people from previous seasons. Something. They we need, need something some to shake it yeah, up. Yeah, we need yeah. some spice. Because usually... And maybe they're just being mature. But usually on the trips, we see the feistiness and the drama. And I would have to say, out of all the trips, this has probably been the most calm. Yeah. Um, Which is probably a good thing because they're they grown. Try. They, yeah. try. they try. <laughs> they try to make it spicy. They shouldn't be fighting and being dramatic. And it's a shame. I'm like, oh, why, are they being, why aren't they fighting? But, you know, this is a reality show. While like, we don't want to see a bunch of grown women out there acting a fool, we would like to see something interesting happening on our TVs. So. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. well, so really quickly, what are we predicting for next week? I am predicting and hoping. Predictions. What am I predicting? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> I am predicting that um, 
I'm predicting that Quad is gonna we're gonna see her on some more dates before the season is up because now mm-hmm. that this is finalized, this should give her like full closure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm predicting that Jackie is about to show her ASS okay. when it comes down to the girls, but when it comes down to her marriage, I do feel like she's open to doing better in mm-hmm. that situation. I just predict Buffy is not gonna show us anything, especially after those clips with the ladies. I feel like this is gonna just be her the whole season. Yeah. Um, and who else am I missing? Contessa, I mean, I'm predicting. Ugh. Yeah, that's just how I feel. I was just like, I can, I don't really know what to predict. Honestly, I predict so it getting better, but at this point, everything seems a little bit stagnant. Mm-hmm. Um, other than Contessa and Scott, I think we're gonna see more of them trying to work through their marriage. But aside from that, hopefully, it's some new situations that I can't predict, so that things can get a little bit better and more interesting to watch. So yeah. So, all right, guys. Yep. That's our show. That today. wraps it up for today, pretty much. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. We missed you last week, but we're glad that you're back and we'll be back again next week. Um, before thank we get you. out of here, Pietra, let them know where they can find you. You guys know me, I'm Pietra Elise. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Pietra Elise TV. That is P E T R A E L I S E T V. Yes, yeah, so you guys can find me on social media at I am Lexi Fierce. That is I A M L E X I F I E R C E. And until next week, that's you guys later. See you later. Good night. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.